We thank you for getting us here safely, Lord God, for keeping us in our right mind. God, we just want to say thank you. And God, even as we prepare to hear from you on today, Lord God, I pray, Lord God, that you would speak a word, Lord God. Speak a word to your people, God. A word that will save someone. A word that will heal someone. A word that will deliver somebody. Let us know that this is the acceptable time and you're blessing us even now. And God, if you do these things for us, we'd be careful to give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. It's in the matchless name of Jesus that we pray. And let every heart say amen. 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 Hallelujah. We give glory and honor to our Heavenly Fathers and Him that we live, move, and have a very being. Amen. To all of you, God's children, we are just excited to be in the house of the Lord one more time. Amen. I do, I do, I do apologize for my tardiness. I got held up in Cleveland this morning. Amen. But we just thank God for being here. Thank God for you all coming early on today and making that exception on today. We just thank God for uh, to be here in the house of the Lord one more time. Amen. Amen, amen. Is anybody excited to be in the house of the Lord? Yeah. Hallelujah. We thank God for his glory. We thank God for his grace. We thank God for his mercy on today. Amen, amen. If you have your word, if you have your Bibles with you, turn with me to the book of Acts. The Acts of the Apostles. <laughs> Turn with me to chapter 12. Acts chapter 12. I'm going to begin reading at verse number 5. Acts chapter 12, beginning at verse number 5. And the word of God reads, Peter therefore was kept in prison, but prayer, somebody say prayer, prayer. was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. And when Herod would have brought him forth the same night, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers bound with two chains. And the keepers before the door kept the prison. And behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him. And a light shined in the prison, and he smote Peter on the side and raised him up, saying, Arise up quickly. And his chains fell off from his hands. And the angel said unto him, Gird thyself and bind on thy sandals. And so he did. And he saith unto him, Cast thy garment about thee, and follow me. And he went out and followed him, and was not that it was true, which was done by the angel, but thought he saw a vision. When they were past the first and second war, they came unto the iron gate that leadeth unto the city, which opened of them of his own accord. And they went out and passed on through one street. And forthwith the angel departed from him. And when Peter was come to himself, he said, now I know of a surety that the Lord hath sent his angel and hath delivered me out of the hand of Herod and from all the expectation of the people of the Jews. May the Lord bless the readers, hearers, and doers of his holy word. Amen. And when Peter was come to himself, he said, Now I know of a surety that the Lord hath sent his angel and hath delivered me out of the hand of Herod and from the expectation of the people of the Jews. Amen. Amen. Something about prayer. There's something about prayer. 
And prayer is our communication with God. And prayer is a powerful tool. Yes, prayer has power. Amen. Amen. And we see in this, this, this scripture here on today, the power of prayer. Amen. We've been looking this month at the, at, at the thoughts of, of, of praise and, and worship. Amen. We've been looking at the power of praise and worship, the purpose of praise and worship. And on today, we're looking at prayer. Amen. Amen. And, and, and if you will, we just want to speak uh, uh, from the thought, the power in prayer. The power in prayer. Amen. You know, prayer is our communication with God. Prayer is how we talk to God. But the thing about prayer is, it's not a one-way communication. Prayer is something that we do uh, usually in talking to God and, and, and telling God what's going on in our lives. If we have a concern, we stop and spend time in prayer because we believe that prayer changes things. We, we believe that prayer will fix some situations, amen. amen. But it's important to understand uh, if we want to access the power of prayer. It's important to understand uh, um, how prayer works and what prayer is, amen. amen. Now we we've, we've looked at prayer before. We've done a, a, a Bible study series looking at prayer, amen. We looked at prayer. We looked at, at, at the Lord's Prayer and how Jesus taught his disciples how to pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive those, as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil, amen. If you take every line of that, of the model prayer, we, 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 we understand that there's purpose in how Jesus taught his disciples how to pray. There's purpose, amen. And if you, if you caught that in Bible study, I pray that you were blessed, amen. But it starts out by saying, our Father, our Father. Now, now the importance of, of the our Father is letting us know who we're talking to. Who we're talking to. We're talking to, to God and, and we recognize him as our Father, right? Our Father, right? Our Father. Not my Father, but what? Our Father. It's important to know uh, who your Father is. It's important to know when you're praying who your Father is. Amen. 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 Now, now, uh, we pray, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Our Father, where is he? In heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Blessed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it already is in heaven. Amen. It's two things that we must understand about prayer. Uh, prayer is our communication with God. But in order to have the to ask, to have this power in prayer, in order for it to really work, there's two things we must know. We have to 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 to, to understand that we now have access to God. We have access to God. You don't see Him in front of you. You don't see Him in front of you. But we believe by faith that He is. We believe by faith that when we profess with our, confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, yes. salvation is ours. And, 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 and when, when, when salvation is ours, we're, we're now justified, not by uh, uh, what we have done, but because of what Christ did for us. Yes. We're justified. Justification means being made right. 
right? Made, made righteous. So, so, so uh, when we give our lives to Christ, when Christ look, when God looks at us, He doesn't see us. He doesn't see us. He sees Christ and the blood that covers, right? The blood that was shed. And that's important to understand because uh, uh, even on our worst day, we can still go to God. Even on our worst day, all we have to do is repent, right? Repent, repent, have a change of heart, a change of mind, right? And when we repent, God is faithful to forgive. Amen. And now, 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 in understanding this, we gotta, we have to know that we do have what? We have access to God, right? Now, now, if you have your Bible, turn to John 14 and 14. John chapter 14, verse 14. We're going to talk about what? We're going to talk about, about Peter in a second, but uh, John chapter 14, verse 14. All right? Now, John 14, 14 says, If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. Jesus said, If ye shall ask anything, in my name, I will do it. Does that mean that anything I ask God, he'll do? No. It said, anything you ask in my name, in the name of Jesus. Now, that's not just saying uh, when I end the prayer, I say in the name of Jesus. Yes, that's what we're supposed to do. But there's more wrapped up in that. Just because we ask for, I can't say, Lord, I want a, a Maserati in the name of Jesus. No, that doesn't mean it's going to just pop up. That's not what that means. When you ask in the name, that means you're asking in the character of God, according to the character of God, right? So if I'm asking God for something, if I'm praying about something, I have to make sure it's according to God's character, according to his will for my life, according to his will for your life, right? I can't just ask for something and, it is, and, and expect God to do it if it's not in his will for my life. Now, now that's not to say he won't do it. He has his, there's his uh, uh, permissive will and his perfect will. His perfect will is what he wants for us. His permissive will is sometimes he allows us to have what we want. We may not be ready for it, but he'll allow it. Right. right? Right. But when we ask, if you want your prayer to be answered, if you ask according to God's will for your life, it's yes and amen. He said, anything you ask in my name, I will do it. If you ask according to the character of God, if you ask according to the will of God for your life, it will it'll happen. So if you want every prayer answered, make sure you align your will with God's will. Sometimes we pray and ask God to do and we don't even, we're not even lining up with his will for our lives. We know we are one. We know we're not lined up with, with how he wants, but yet and still we ask. Right? We ask him. Sometimes, lately I've been feeling convicted if on Friday, sometimes the family would go out to eat. Right, we'll go to a restaurant and fast food, we'll pick up something quick for the kids. And then we pray over the food and say, Lord, bless this food. But we know that food's not good for us. It's grease and all this other stuff. But yet and still, I'm saying, God bless. Now, now I'm just, I, I, it, it, this is just something that made me think. And, and, and it's not so much right or wrong, it's just something that's, made, that made me, that, that's making me think. I'm asking God to, to bless this food and make it, make it nourishing to the body when I know it doesn't have the nourishment or anything that I need, right? And so, so that's just a little simple example, but we have to make sure that what we're asking of God is according to his will for our lives. We have access to God. James 4 and 8 tells us to draw nigh to God and he will. That's a promise. If I draw near to God, the word says what? He'll draw near to me. So if I want God to show up, what do I need to do? I need to draw near to God. God, I don't feel you present. 
God, I don't feel you in my city. What do I need to do? I need to draw near to God, right? So we have to understand that we have access to God, but not only do we have to understand we have access to God, but we have to understand, we have to have an awareness. We have to have an awareness. In other words, we have to be aware of who God is and what God's will is for our lives. We have to have an awareness. We have to be aware that what we wrestle against is not flesh and blood, but it's what? Spiritual. It's a spiritual battle. Some of the things that you deal with, um, though you see it in the flesh, it's a spiritual battle. Right? It's something that's taking place in the spiritual realm. And see, this is, this is what blesses me. When I understand that God's will for my life is already done in the spiritual realm, right? It's already ordained. I'm just waiting on the manifestation of it here. By his stripes, we are healed. That's what the word says. By his stripes, we are healed. Are is present tense. We are healed. So, so where are we healed? It's in the spiritual realm. We have to make sure we do what? Line it up in the, I mean, we have to wait for the manifestation in the physical realm. That means I need to align my life to God's will. I need to, to live like God tells me to live. God says rest, right? I need to, 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 to uh, get nourishment as God has, has designed for us to get, making sure that we're eating the right thing, right? I have to align my will to God's will. Amen. So, so I have to be aware and I have to understand that I have access to God. Now, now here in this lesson on today, if you look at, at, at chapter 12, we see that Peter was in prison. Now, if you go back to the beginning of chapter 12, you will see that Herod the king was, was out trying to, uh, to, to, um, to hurt the church, if you will. To, to, uh, 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 he was persecuting the church. And in verse 2 it says, Herod killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. One of the apostles. And, and when he saw that it pleased the people, the people that were pleased by it, he proceeded to take Peter also. So he apprehended him, put him in prison, and delivered him. Right. So here Peter is in prison. He was kept in prison. But look at verse five. Look at what it said. But what? Prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. When Peter was captured, the what? The church started what? The church started praying. The church started praying. So Peter was captured and the church immediately started praying. Not just one person, but the what? Entire church started praying on Peter's behalf. Now understand that the church is in one place, Peter is in prison. They're praying. They don't know what's happening to Peter. They don't know what's going on. All they know is what? They're praying. Now look at what happens while they're praying. The word says, when Herod would have brought him forth the same night, Peter was sleeping, right? There were people around him. He was, he was in chains. And it says, behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him, and a light shined in the prison. And he smote Peter on the side. He hit him on the side. He struck him on the side and said, Peter, get up. Get up quickly. And it said, his chains fell off from his hand. So the church was praying. Now, a lot of times we think, what? What does prayer do? Prayer is the thing that's going to change. When I pray, that's what, what, what is, what's going to change my situation. But what did prayer do in this situation? Look at the scripture. Uh, uh, the word says that Peter's chains fell off. Now, the church was praying. Was it prayer? That took the chains off of Peter. Was it prayer that made the chains fall off of Peter? No. Look at what it says. It says the angel. The angel came and did what? Came upon him. Struck Peter on the side and said, get up. And the chains fell off of him. It was the angel who caused the chains 
to fall off. A lot of times we think it was prayer, the people praying that did it. No, it was the angel. But I asked the question, how did the angel get there? It was because of prayer. The people were praying. The angel showed up. Is there anybody here who needs an angel to show up in there? Is there anybody here who needs an angel to show up in their situation? Do you need a message from God in something that you're going through right now? Well, I tell you, that's what the purpose of prayer is. See, prayer is how we connect with God. Prayer is how we reach God. Prayer is how we activate God. Prayer, when we pray in faith. And it was God working on his behalf. The church was praying. But it was the angel who got Peter out of his chains. But it was prayer that got the angel there. If you remember back in the book of Daniel, the Bible says Daniel was, was praying, right? He was praying for his people. He was praying, and he started praying for 21. He prayed. He continued praying 21 days. And when the angel finally came to him on that 21st day, what, what, what the angel said, look, Peter, uh, look, Daniel, God heard you the first day you were praying. But there was spiritual warfare that kept me from getting to you. See, the people were praying, and they had no idea what was happening. They're still praying, and the angel came and worked on me. See, when you pray, sometimes it looks like it's not working out. It looks like things are still the same, but something is happening in the spiritual realm. Something is happening in the, in the heavenly realm. But we have to continue to pray because of spiritual warfare. You got to pray. That's why the Bible tells us to pray without ceasing. It may not look like it's working in your life, but you got to know that God is working on your behalf. So the angel came, the angel came, the angel showed up and, and his chains fell off and the, the angel said unto to him, gird thyself and, and bind on thy sandals and, and Peter did it. I want us to look at that in the NIV version. Let me read it to you real quick. All right, verse, listen to what it says. Then the angel said unto him, put on your clothes and your sandals. And Peter did so. Wrap your cloak around you and follow me, the angel told him. Now, now this might just be seem like a, a, just a trivial statement here that, hey, Peter, put your clothes on. But if you, if you, if, if, if you, you understand the, the, anything about the, the penal system, the prison system, uh, um, when a person uh, uh, goes to jail, they have to get fingerprinted and picture taken and all this stuff and, and they're checked and everything, but then they do what? They take your clothes and give you some other clothes, right? They take your clothes and then put them somewhere, and you don't have that anymore. Anything that was yours, it was what? Take it. So Peter's in prison, and the angel said something to him, said something powerful to him. The angel said, put on your clothes. And sandals, wrap your cloak around you and follow me. See, somebody missed it right there. See, what happened was, before he exited, the angel told him to get back that which was taken from you and then follow me. See, sometimes we go through situations in life and we seem and tend to, to lose some stuff. And it's not always the physical stuff, but sometimes you can find yourself in situations and you lose your joy. You might find yourself in a situation and you lose your peace. 
You might find yourself in a situation and you lose your confidence. You may lose some things in the, in, 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 in the process. You might lose the feeling that someone loves you. You might lose the feeling that, that of hope for tomorrow. But when God shows up in your life, he's able to return that which you lost in the process. See, somebody needs to get their joy back. You've been going through something and you've been up and you've been down. You have been stable all the way through. Maybe it was sickness. Maybe it was heartache. Maybe it was um, something happening on the job. Maybe it's dealing with your kids. Whatever it is, you lost your joy. You lost that thing that kept you stable. Well, God will give you your joy back. God will give you your joy back. He'll give you that stability. That even though things still seem like they rough, you'll be able to coast on through. You'll be able to go through without being shaken. Because you know that God is working all things together for your good. Somebody needs their peace back. See, see, peace is needed. Peace that surpasses all understanding. The peace of God, you don't have to come out of the storm to experience his peace. You can have his peace while you're going through. See, somebody in here needs to get their peace back. You've been waiting on the situation to end so you can calm down. Well, God wants to calm you down while you're in the waiting room. God wants to calm you down while you're going through. God wants to say to your storm, peace, be still. But you got to believe it by faith. The rain doesn't have to stop falling. The thunder doesn't have to stop. The lightning doesn't have to stop striking for you to walk in the peace of God. You just have to believe and, and, and trust and, and, and just pray about that thing. But don't just pray about it. you got to have faith that God is working it out on your behalf. That it's already done in the spiritual realm. That he's working all things together for your good. I want somebody in here, before you leave out of here today, you need to get your peace back. Somebody needs to get their joy back. Somebody needs to get their confidence back. See, your confidence was shaken after you went through all the stuff that you went through. Maybe you thought you weren't good enough. Maybe you thought you weren't deserving. But you need to get your confidence back. Your confidence is built on the one who created you. See, when God made you, he didn't make no mess. When God made you, he did so with plans for you. The word says, I know the plans that I have for you. Plans that are not meant to harm you, but for you to prosper, to give you a hope and future. See, somebody lost their hope. They lost their hope for tomorrow. They're expecting the, the, the same thing to happen that's happened today. You've got yourself accustomed to living the way that you've been living. Going through what you've been trying to, to just work your way through. To, to be get used to it. This is just how things. No, God has even greater in store for you. you got to get your home back. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God will give it back to you. See, it's the spiritual blessing that we need to have and that we need to hold on to. The angel told him to put on his clothes. This suggests a change in clothes. A change in what you've been experiencing. Something's going to change. He says, get your clothes. Somebody needs to see the power in prayer. In order to experience the power of prayer, you first have to know without a shadow of a doubt that you have access to God. You don't have to go through anybody else to connect to God.
Bible says, go in your secret closet and talk to God. And he'll reward you in the open, in, in, in open place. You have access to God. And you also have to be aware that God has plans for your life. A lot of times we stop, we put a period where there needs to be a comma. Sometimes situations happen and they, they, they cause us to, to pause. You have to make sure that you don't make the mistake of stopping, giving up, throwing in the towel. You got to keep going, keep pushing through. Why? Because God has great things in store for you. The story goes on to say that after Peter left, he went to the house where Mary, the mother of John, was where other people were gathered that were praying for him. He knocked on the door and somebody came to the door but didn't know and believe that it was him because they were like, wait a minute, he's in prison. They're still praying. And they didn't realize their prayers had been asked. to open your spiritual eyes because what we see in the natural will make us think that things haven't changed that it's still the same but you gotta know that when you align your, align your life to the will of God and you're walking according to God's purpose for your life when you draw near to him, knowing he'll draw near to you, you have to know and believe that God is hearing your prayers. Amen. And ask God, God, help me to see with my spiritual eyes. Help me to see through your eyes, not by what I see in the natural, but help me to see by faith what you're doing. When you see it by faith, it doesn't mean that you're going to necessarily see something. It simply means that you're going to believe. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. You might be praying for a new relationship, a new job. You may, you may be praying for a, a, a breakthrough. You may be, whatever you're praying for, you may be praying for God to just do something in your life. Whatever you're praying for, make sure it lines up with the will of God. Look, find in the scripture, what does God say according to this, whatever it is you're praying for? And draw near to God. And trust and believe he will draw near to you. There is power in prayer. You got to believe that when you pray, God is going to give it back to you. And not just the physical stuff, but the spiritual stuff. Amen. Because all the stuff that we can attain in this world, we can't take it with us. It's all temporary. God wants to build our character. God is trying to mold us into the image of his son, Jesus. Right? God is trying to do a great work in us. So we have to make sure that we're working on those spirits, the love, the joy, the peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, self-control, the things that God is, he's trying to make us like his son. But he doesn't expect us to do it on our own. God wants to work in your life. This is an opportunity for you to say yes to God. You know, as I look around, I know most people who are here are already saved, have already given their life. We always extend the invitation. Maybe there's somebody here who hasn't accepted Christ. And if that's you, you can come. You can come, you can come while the 
No matter how long you've been walking with God, there's some, the fact that there's still breath in your body means that there's something that God still needs to work on in your life. And I just want to encourage you to submit your life to God. Yield, surrender your life so that he can have his way. Be intentional about aligning your will to God's will. Because when you align your will to God's will, that's when all the good stuff starts to happen. That's when all the great stuff starts to happen. But don't be deceived. When God starts working, it may look like it's not working. But you got to trust God. Because how God, God doesn't work how the world works. You got to trust God. Put your faith in God. Amen. 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 There's power in prayer. Hallelujah. We thank God.